Hello, and welcome to mini lecture 5.5. In this lecture, we're going to talk about two types of psychoactive drugs. First, we'll talk about antidepressants, and then we will talk about stimulants. So antidepressants. Depression, major depression, is common amongst adults. In the US, some estimates suggest that 6%, other estimates suggest higher percentages, of people are experiencing a major depression at any point in time. Um, major depression is a mood disorder that's characterized by uh, long-term feelings of uh, low self-worth. Um, uh, often eating is disrupted and sleep patterns are disrupted. So either people uh, sleep more than usual or less than usual. They may be eating more than usual or not wanting to eat much at all. Major depression is associated with a general slowing of behavior. Sometimes people experiencing depression speak quite slowly, um, and it can be associated with thoughts of suicide. Major depression is uh, twice as likely to occur in women than in men, uh, but we don't know how much of that is uh, differences, gender-based differences in reporting. Um, there are two classes of drugs that are frequently used to help people with depression. Um, one is called SSRIs uh, and the other is SSNRIs. SSRIs are selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. The idea with these is that depression may be associated with lower levels of serotonin, maybe, it's controversial. In any case, uh, SSRIs um, block the reuptake of serotonin in the synapse, in the synaptic gap. So imagine a world where there was no recycling. Um, your aluminum cans and glass bottles would pile up and up and up. Um, blocking the reuptake of serotonin essentially does that, allows the serotonin levels to build up in the synapse, which at least if you're the receiving neuron, leads you to believe that there's a whole lot of serotonin um, in the synapse. SSRIs um, that you may have heard of include Prozac and Paxil and Zoloft. There's another category of antidepressants that work both on serotonin and norepinephrine. That's where the N comes from in SSNRIs and they work to block the reuptake of both serotonin and norepinephrine. How do antidepressants actually work? You know, that's a surprisingly big controversy. Um, here's one of the problems. SS, uh, uh, antidepressants change what happens at a synapse very quickly, um, but people feeling better after they take antidepressants, that takes weeks. So why is a drug that causes an immediate impact on uh, um, synaptic transmission causing taking so long to make people feel better? That's a, that's a curious thing. Um, also, uh, there's evidence to suggest that some SSRIs, such as Prozac, actually increase the volume of a part of the brain called the hippocampus, which is involved in learning and memory. Uh, and we know that depression makes it harder for students to remember things. So some people have thought, well, maybe the increase in the number of cells in the hippocampus through a mechanism that we haven't covered yet called neurogenesis, maybe it's this neurogenesis that's actually causing people to feel better. Again, the science is still out. About 20% of people with major depression who try uh, antidepressants don't find them helpful. So there are clearly multiple mechanisms that give rise to depression and figuring out which medications actually help which types of depression is a, is a issue of, of quite active study. Uh, the other category I wanted to talk to you about was stimulants. Um, behavioral stimulants cause us to increase our motor behavior and elevate, elevate our mood. We feel better and we're more alert. These are going to include everything from caffeine in your morning cup of joe to cocaine. 
So a big category of stimulants are amphetamines. And amphetamines work by blocking uh, the reuptake of dopamine. So dopamine builds up in the synapse as a result of people taking amphetamines. With all this dopamine in the synapse, it continues to stimulate the receiving neuron. Um, and amphetamines are used to treat everything from ADHD to asthma to helping people lose weight. They're stimulants. Methamphetamines um, are a category of psychoactive drug that produce um, uh, a, a very big high, a period of euphoria that lasts a um, quarter of a day, half a day. Um, it also increases um, your sex drive, your libido, also your sense of self-esteem. Um, so methamphetamines is very attractive drug for people who have low self-esteem or, or are shy because it makes them very outgrowing. Um, but the long-term use of methamphetamines um, is really a problem. Remember that I mentioned when we were talking about Parkinson's that you need dopamine to make your um, motor system move smoothly, so to have smooth actions. Well, if stimulants are stimulating dopamine over and over again, um, and the dopamine receptors over and over again, eventually, if you take methamphetamine for a long time, it's going to blow out that um, dopamine system and you are going to um, experience all sorts of really negative things including uh, the shakes, um, anhedonia which is a difficulty experiencing pleasure. Um, Long-term use can be um, sometimes people who take methamphetamines a long time they grind their teeth uh, so much that they um, have sometimes really uh, horrific dental problems. Um, it causes a lot of aging. In fact, I've got a picture here, a before and after picture of um, a woman before and after she became addicted to methamphetamines for a long period of time. Cocaine is another stimulant. Cocaine is actually a psychoactive drug that's been around for a very long time. Uh, over a hundred years ago, when the soda Coca-Cola was developed, it was called Coca-Cola because it had cocaine in it. Um, Sigmund Freud, uh, the father of um, the psychodynamic approach to personality development and psychotherapy, wrote an article on how wonderful cocaine was for stimulating new ideas, creativity. Um, dopamine, I'm uh, sorry, uh, cocaine works on multiple neurotransmitter systems. So it um, blocks the reuptake which is a way of increasing the effectiveness of dopamine, serotonin, and norepinephrine. Um, so those three neurotransmitters just stay in the synaptic gap and stimulate, stimulate, stimulate the receiving neuron. Um, people who take cocaine describe uh, an initial high that lasts about half an hour and feels great, followed by a, a longer term, a slower sort of crash. Um, you may have heard of uh, crack cocaine, which is a version of cocaine that um, gives a more intense high. Caffeine is a psychoactive drug. So the caffeine that's in your cup of coffee or to a lesser extent your cup of tea, we know what having that cup of coffee in the morning does, right? It wakes you up, it increases your arousal, it helps you to focus and be alert, and it decreases feelings of sleepiness. Um, so what happens if you stop getting that morning cup of coffee or tea? Well, you know, it leads to headaches, right? You feel uh, shaky and anxious and tired. It's a kind of addiction, right, to caffeine. Nicotine in your cigarettes, um, in your e-cigarettes, that's another kind of stimulant. Um, nicotine uh, stimulates acetylcholine receptors, which we talked about before with uh, Botox. Um, it uh, activates the muscles in your peripheral nervous system. Um, sometimes that can lead to sort of a twitching, a small scale twitching. But in the central nervous system, 
Uh, people smoke for a reason. It clears their mind, it helps them to focus, uh, and it makes them feel better. About um, t- Only about 20% of the time um, are people able to successfully stop smoking or vaping. Um, it's, it's a, nicotine is just super duper addictive. Alcohol is a funny psychoactive drug. At the beginning, when you first start taking it, it's a stimulus. So that first beer or that first glass of wine, what does it do? It makes you feel good. It makes you feel outgoing. Um, but then as you drink more of it, it becomes a depressant. Alcohol impacts, I, d- I don't want you to memorize, people in my class, I don't want you to memorize this slide, but what I do want you to know is that alcohol impacts huge, uh, the at, huge numbers of neurotransmitters and, and their pathways. So um, alcohol changes the way um, GABA is working. It changes the way glutamate is working. Um, it's thought to um, lead to stimulation of endorphins receptors, dopamine receptors, serotonin receptors, um, cannabinoids, which we haven't covered yet, but you also were born into this world with cannabinoid receptors. Unfortunately, about 5% of pregnant women in the U.S. and Canada are alcoholics. And it turns out that drinking alcohol during pregnancy um, can have very negative consequences on the fetus. There's something called fetal alcohol syndrome, which is um, uh, something that occurs to children who are born of alcoholic mothers. They tend to have... um, smaller heads, um, lower IQ, behavioral problems, um, long-term planning problems, um, problems with their sight or audition. audition. Um, So uh, fetal alcohol syndrome is a reminder to women that during pregnancy, as far as we know, there is no safe level of alcohol to consume. So if you're pregnant, you just, you wanna stay away from alcohol altogether. Uh, on the other hand, alcohol withdrawal is really hard, um, be- probably because alcohol affects so many different aspects of the central nervous system. Uh, once you become uh, addicted to alcohol, it's your body really becomes dependent on it and it rebels when you, you don't give it the alcohol it needs. Um, one of the um, problems associated with um, alcoholics when they stop drinking alcohol is something called DT or delirium tremors. Um, they are a kind of seizure uh, that happens um, that can actually be deadly. Um, it, The symptoms of withdrawal from alcohol include everything from irritability and anxiety to shakiness and fatigue and depression. Okay, that's it for this mini lecture. Come back for our last mini lecture on uh, psychoactive drugs. And in that last lecture, we will talk about hallucinogens or also called psychedelics.